it feels like he's being interviewed. Tell us yeah. how you really feel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest, I was fuming that I didn't score in the 5 0. <laughs> this is the official Leeds United podcast. Let's talk about the recent games because, Patrick, when we last had you on, you hadn't played the three games over the festive period yet. No. Um, how are you feeling? What do you take away from that? I mean, I think all three of us can agree uh, we're pretty chuffed with how you boys performed, aren't we? Yeah, I think so. I think if you'd have said before the three games, six points out of uh, nine, I think everyone would have taken it. Um, mm. I think that the fact that we won the first two and then going into Spurs, we thought we could get something from the game. Um, it was just one of them where they they were ruthless with their chances and we ultimately weren't. Um, but that they're a good team and I think that the fact that we are a little bit downhearted on that, losing to Spurs, I think that shows a lot about how far we've come. So. Yes. He feels, it feels like he's being interviewed. Tell us yeah. how you really feel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, I was fuming that I didn't score in the 5 0. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you said no, it, Patrick, because what these two were going to. Honestly, I was going mad. I was 100%. trying my hardest. I was thinking, this, I could be out there for another two hours here and I'm not going to score. <laughs> but, it's just, you know, just one like, of them days. When it's a demolition job like that, Patrick, yeah. when, you know, when, when you win by such you know, a huge margin, and yeah. you don't score, like, truthfully, are you absolutely buzzing because yeah. as a collective you've won? Or is there a little bit of you that's like, I wanted some goals? Yeah, well, I'm buzzing that we won, but then obviously I'm fuming that I haven't scored. So <laughs> Rafa obviously scored a worldie, <laughs> didn't he? In the, um, Rafinha in the game, he scored a great goal. And he was really happy after. And the first thing I said to him was, yeah, good goal, but when are you going to assist me? <laughs> 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 love it, love it. Um, well, Matt, as a fan, um, over to you. Like, how do you feel about the performance well, in those three games? I think I think that um, you've absolutely summed that up perfectly. I mean, the the pressure that we, you know, the disappointment that we feel whenever we lose any of these games seems to be just from the pressure that we've put on ourselves from playing so well um, in, in in other games. I mean, we mentioned it when we talked about the Man United game last last week or week before, and. These aren't games that a newly promoted side should be expecting to win. And yet it feels like the whole country is sort of is feel, feeling like we can get a result in, against anyone. And so when we do it, we go, oh, bloody hell, we could have won that. We could have got some points there. But actually, we're talking about away at Spurs. Jose Mourinho, you know, this is, this is not an easy game by any stretch. And I actually thought we played really well. Um, you know, I thought that that very, very dubious penalty... Um, <laughs> Was was a, was a big turning point. It kind of reminded me a bit of the the Crystal Palace game in that it was a game that actually, if you reran it a couple of times, it could go either way. But there were just these key moments that didn't quite go in our favour. So I wasn't too disappointed with it. And as and as Pat said there, six points from Burnley and West Brom. That's the games you need to be winning if you want to stay up. Which is still actually the main goal, isn't it? I mean, mm-hmm. being up in twelfth is fantastic, and the sky's the limit for us. But Staying up's all we've got to do, isn't it? So yeah, six points over those over, and also, last thing to say as well, everyone talks about this congested period and that we're going to burn out and all this. And you guys broke your running stats at West Brom <laughs> like 24, 48 hours after you'd just beaten Burnley. So you, you, not only are you winning games, but you're also shooting down nonsense as well. So it's I love it. Patrick, we we spoke about the fact that it was so congested for you as a player. How was that period with the intensity of it? Um, so after playing Burnley, uh, we had an ice bath straight after the game. Then the next day, straight in in the morning, was just ice bath again and the cycle. Then we travelled to the hotel and the morning of the game against West Brom, we all had to go in an ice bath again. It, honestly, it was horrible. Like I've never done it before in my life. Three days on a bounce ice bath, especially before the game. How long do you have to stay in the ice bath for? Uh, Ten minutes, but at the training ground, it's all right because it's like a... It's just water and it's the temperature's taken down by a machine. But obviously when we're at the hotel, it literally feels like a bucket of ice. Like there's more ice in it than there's water, it feels. And oh, it is horrible. But somehow, as uh, Matt said, we did. We broke the record. And I, I don't know how, because in that game, I felt absolutely rotten. <laughs> My legs were gone. <laughs> But it is incredible because you do just find that m- momentum and that strength to just keep going. And that is what, like Matt said there, it's just fascinating to watch. And it is part of what makes you guys so entertaining as well, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. The fact that we run about, people say that we're kind of gung-ho and out of position a lot. 
but that's just our, our style of play and um as you know we have to be super fit under Marcelo's kind of tactics and um even if it's 48 hours between the games I think part of it is mental strength once you get into the game you kind of forget a little bit about your legs until maybe the 60th minute and then it all comes <laughs> crashing down on you <laughs> but it, it did help being 4-0 up I've got to say listening on together this weekend, Leeds United face Crawley. And uh, Bex, I want to come to you first to talk about um, your memories of the FA Cup and obviously the, the most famous incident. Share that with us. Oh Share God, your memories. Here we go. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> it's your time to shine, mate. Come on. <laughs> it's all ever here. Here we go. <laughs> um, do you know what? One of my favourite things about the FA Cup is it's, it's not a given as to who wins and who loses or who you're drawn against or... Um, who you're going to play against. You know, as a, as a child, as a kid, you, you watch it on the TV and you see these, um, these teams from leagues, Sunday leagues almost, you know, a little bit further up, uh, getting pitted against some of the biggest uh, names in, in world football. And to be able to rub shoulders with some of these players who are, the, who are classed as some of the best in the world, playing in the best leagues, you know, for me, that, that was always a dream of mine. And, and to be able to have lived it on multiple occasions and, and fortunately to have scored as well um, in a few of the, uh, the games, it was, it was massive. It was a dream come true. And, and that's why I'm still so passionate about it now. Because, you know, when you, you dream something for as long as I've dreamt something and you're able to, to live that moment again and again and then play in these big games and score against these big teams again and again and... You know, I love that. And I love to be able to, to share my, my emotions with people that, that would appreciate it. If they don't appreciate it, like Matty, then they don't appreciate it. It's not a problem. <laughs> you know, but it, it gives me an opportunity to just, just be myself and, and just talk about something that I'm, I'm truly passionate about. I will never want to stop hearing about that goal. Ever. Matty, I love just, you. Just really. so you know. <laughs> is nice we like this um i think that's where it ends though boys isn't it um, um and patrick talk to us about your fa cup experiences um i was just trying to think then when jermaine said scoring in the fa cup i don't know if i actually have um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd, i've played a few games i remember when i was at middlesbrough played against arsenal which, it was nice at the emirates but it was horrible chasing santi casola and ozil around how good um, is he by the way uh, he he's the best I think I've played against. Oh my he was word. ridiculous. Um, but other FA Cup games, you don't, I can't actually remember that many. I think from my loans and stuff, by the time I'd either left the team or joined the team, they were either finished in the FA Cup or been knocked out or whatever, or, or I just didn't play. So it would be nice. I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't know if I'll play this weekend, but um, it is a cup that, as, as Jermaine said, it's got a lot of history and listening on together how much do you get involved with um signings and moving and stuff or do you just pretty much leave it to your agent do they deal with it um what in terms of moving yourself or if other players are coming in yeah with well both really i guess moving yourself but also it, it'd be interesting to get your take on the introduction of other players and how they get integrated with you guys so um for yourself generally i'll take for when i moved to leeds for example the my agent told me that Leeds were making an offer to Middlesbrough then I kind of said he asked me do you want to do it I said yeah and then he went through the they go through the nitty gritty or the paperwork and stuff and then it was actually the Middlesbrough manager who told me that you, look you're not playing today because this deal's going through and then it was just about leaving it to the to your agent to sort out and they kind of sort everything out and then kind of just ring you up and say this is what I've sorted okay with you and you kind of you basically I've never said no so it's pretty much <laughs> it's pretty much you're putting your life in the hands of someone you've got to trust I think and I get, a lot a lot of agents nowadays aren't very trustworthy but unfortunately I get on quite well with mine and then when you was on about the other players coming in in the summer when we was linked with Rodrigo I was texting Jay because obviously I was thinking oh they're signing the Spanish number nine um, like for what's happening here I'm I'm just going to be on the bench all season and um, he said no 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 I think that he's looking at him because he can play with you he can play number 10 number 9 number 7 number 11 he's just an attacking player and we, I think that the fact that we were signing him kind of 
motivated me that like oh god I've got to make sure that I'm on it because then if not he is going to take my place and as soon as I saw him you could see how good he was I mean on the ball he is he's brilliant and you can tell why he plays for Spain so then once I realized actually there's a chance that I could play with him it kind of got me excited it got me really excited because you want to be playing with the good players and I think that playing with better players actually improves you quicker so it was one of them when he came in I was uh Nervous at first, but then excited. What's that greeting like? Like that exchange when you first meet what you deem to be almost like your competition. What is it like? Can you paint that picture for us? Yeah, at, at the majority of clubs I've been at, it's been quite cold with the other strikers. Or it can go one of two ways. They can either just say hello, not make a big fuss, or they can be overly false. And you think, yeah, you're tending to be my best mate, but I know what you're doing. There's only been a couple of times where... It's actually been, like, you can tell they're being honest. And one of them was actually Rodrigo. He's probably the like, most friendliest guy Ooh. I've met because he was like it with everyone. And it, the fact that he spoke English pretty much perfectly already helped. So he was really bubbly. And then when I was at <clears> Middlesbrough, um, when Brit signed some Belonga, I'd known Brit since I was 15. So we were like best mates anyway. So we were just happy that oh. we were both at the same team. So it, it can go one or two ways. Listening on together uh, well I guess that kind of leads into the question I was going to ask then because you're all in high profile roles um Jermaine you still even now um I mean do does it breed insecurity to a degree uh nah you have to have confidence in in your ability and as Matty will notice more than anybody and I'm not singling you out mate this is <laughs> this is like this is um I'm, I'm praising you for who you are in your character here this is, this is going to be the only time we do this. So, <laughs> um, so when, you're, when you're confident in your ability and you know that you're good, you don't worry about whether you're going to get a role, i.e. Matty, or if you're going to get a, another club, i.e. myself, Patrick. I say myself, it's not going to happen, but I'm, I cling on to the hope. Um, and, you know, if you, if you doubt yourself, you doubt your abilities the people around you will doubt you and your abilities as well. So they won't want to, to trust you in certain situations and you won't get cast for certain roles. You won't get um, contracts for certain clubs. Uh, I won't, get myself and yourself as well. Um, maybe we might not get certain jobs on television on, or on radio because people will doubt us. So I, I don't, if you like me, you like me. If you don't like me, you don't like me. But it's, I'm not going to hold it against you. I'll never hold anything mm. against anybody. We've all got things that we, we like, things that we don't like, um, and things that make us cringe and things that make us wet ourselves laughing. So it's just a matter of being comfortable in your body and, and just getting on with it and seeing where you end up. Well, it's worked think, for you so far, Jermaine. Well, Come on, Matt. I think that's the important thing. Like you just said that it's worked for him. That, that At the end of the day, like you're not going to fit everything. Sometimes you just won't be right for it or you won't be at the right club or, or whatever, the, the, the way the manager's setting up, it's just not right for you. That's not suggesting that you're not good or that you can't do it. It's just that in this particular situation, it's just not right for you. And as you said there, Bex, when it didn't go right for you, it ended up ended up being even better because you went somewhere else. Mm. Look at Pat. Pat's been at tons of clubs and now look where he's in the Premier League banging in goals for Leeds. Like, it's just, as long as you enjoy doing what you're doing and you keep going, like some things aren't going to be right, but you just got to crack on, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. Do you agree with that, Patrick? Do you, as a rule, are you quite secure in, you know, what you do, your performance and the role that you fulfil? Yeah, I think so. As, as Matty just said, that you work through it. If something's, if it's not going well, you know that as long as you believe in yourself, you know that you've got value. You're going to have value somewhere. Um, if it doesn't necessarily work at that club, as I've been at plenty of clubs where your face doesn't fit and um, you, you kind of not built into that kind of mould that, that's needed there. So as long as you keep valuing yourself, I think the problem is when you start doubting yourself, then people start to sense that. If, if you mm. start to be a little bit under, like not very confident, people sense that and you then become easy picking. So as long as you kind of carry yourself well, I think that you, you believe in yourself, you'll always have a place somewhere. This is the official Leeds United podcast. 